let's discuss vaginal discharge. So basically, we look at these differential diagnoses and physiological discharge, history and physical examination, investigations, treatments, physiological discharge, um, and then we also discuss few of the conditions associated with um, pathological discharge. So, vaginal discharge is a common presentation in females of reproductive years and it comes um, to clinical attention when the changes are noticed in uh, the volume, consistency, the color and the odor. Basically, the vaginal flora consists of various species of uh, bacteria uh, which form a film called the biofilm on the surface of the vaginal mucosa and this biofilm acts as a protective barrier which basically prevents um, harmful bacteria from adhering to the surface of the vaginal mucosa and the vagina is continuously moistened by these discharges and it helps maintain a healthy vaginal flora. But the discharge at every point in life of a woman a woman has a particular pH range from birth to about four weeks of life. The pH is about four to um, four point five, um, which is about the same as the reproductive years. The reproductive years, the pH is around three point five to four point five. So from four weeks um, to before menarche and after menopause, the pH is usually around seven which is uh, because of the organisms found in the vagina around that time, um, which are similar to the skin commensals, which also include um, Staphylococcus epidermidis, um, Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus pyrogenes, um, Pseudomonas originosa too. Okay, so these organisms um, are the reasons why the pH comes to that level of around 7. So during the early child um, bearing age or during child bearing age, the vaginal pH is usually acidic between 3.5 to 4.5, like I said earlier. Lactobacillus is mainly the organism found in the vagina around this time, and it represents over 90% of all the bacteria present. And um, this basically defend against infections. By producing the lactic acid, it helps maintain a healthy acidic pH. And by producing um, hydrogen peroxide in the genital environment, it provides basically provides an antimicrobial action. Okay, so the other organisms form just about five percent of the normal vaginal flora, and they include several anaerobic bacterial species such as the gram-positive cocci, um, etopobium vaginae, heptostreptococcus um, species, staphylococcus species, streptococcus, bacteroides, um, fusobacterium species, um, gardnerella vaginalis mobiluncus, prevotella, and gram-negative enteric organisms such as Escherichia coli. So all these organisms are present. They are just part of the five percent. The differential diagnosis, as you, as you can see listed there, um, could be just physiological or pathological. Pathological it could be from infections like gonorrhea, chlamydia, um, trichomoniasis, vulvovaginal candidiasis, and bacterial vaginosis. And others include um, neoplasms, but these are just so rare chemical vaginitis and foreign bodies to cause it. For physiological discharge, it basically occurs in response to hormonal levels during the menstrual cycle and it's usually white and changes to a more yellow color due to oxi oxidation with contact with air. Okay, so it consists, the discharge basically consists of um, the squamated epithelial cells from the vagina and also the cervix the mucus from the cervical glands and also bacteria like lactobacillus so normal vaginal discharge is usually odorless and is not accompanied with itching or burning sensation so when it's associated with 
odor and it's accompanied by itching or burning sensation you know it's pathological so the color and the consistency of normal discharge may undergo changes during the menstrual cycle okay, so this discharge um, that occurs every month is due to cervical mucus and the type of mucus is directly related to the rise in estrogen levels so most women notice a lack of mucus in the days following their period and as estrogen increases the cervical mucus increases building up to ovulation ovulation and also becomes more slippery and clear after ovulation the estrogen drops and progesterone level rises and the cervical mucus becomes sticky and thick and cloudy to white so the fluid formed as a result of the discommitted epithelium from the uh, cervix and vagina could be seen and also the mucus secreted from the cervical glands and also secretions of the botulins glands during um, sexual excitement so bacteria and, and their metabolic products and also fluid um, transits from the genital tract vulva secretions from the sebaceous sweat botulins and skin glands could be the reason of the fluid and also increased discharge occurs as a result of ovulation or the use of oral contraceptive pills okay, for ovulation during ovulation the level of estrogen level increases in the body like i said this um, intense stimulates the glands of the cervix to secrete clear and water-like fluid the use of um, oral contraceptive pills or icds could lead to an increased discharge sexual excite excitement too also bubble baths to lead to an increase in discharge leucorrhea basically refers to the excessive amounts of the normal vaginal discharge and it usually occurs at birth puberty in pelvic congestion and also regular dochin for the examination you pass a speculum and the speculum shows a clear or viscous discharge mainly in the posterior phonics of um, the vagina and for the investigations you just do an H V S high vaginal swab and this is taken from the posterior phonics and microscopy of the normal secretions would reveal many superficial epithelial cells lactobacilli with long growth and also very few white blood cells too. For the history and examination for the history basically you have to know the demography, the age, um, socioeconomic status a presentation the nature the, the nature of the discharge the duration of the discharge you have to know all these two and also the history of the presenting complaint the features of the discharge the duration consistency color the quality although it is associated with each itching and also relation to the menstrual cycle to um, associated symptoms Look out for fever, itching, irritation, pain, dyspareunia, soreness, dysuria, spotting, low abdominal pain, and also foreign body to hygiene, bath, toilet, toiletries, and clothing, including underwear, to gynecological and obstetric history to help. So, the last menstrual period is ovulation or pregnancy, tampon use, contraceptives. Um, the sexual behavior to the number of sexual partners, the type of coital activity, okay, recent change in partner, the use of um, spermicides, and also the use of contraceptives like condom to okay, the past medical history, any treatment for vaginal infection or previous discharge to you know, so DM, diabetes mellitus, HIV, dermatitis, and immunosuppressive conditions to drug history, the long term um, corticosteroids to and broad spectrum antibiotics herbal preparations to and also general examination you have abdominal examination pelvic examination for inspection the discharge you inspect for any discharge the color consistency in the smell inflammation other lesions Emerge to and also speculum examination, the sample collection, 
and also by manual palpation when indicated. You also elicit cervical motion tenderness too. There are also sp supportive investigations that could be done. Swap H V S hypertension and also swap and also E C S. And so indications to obtain swap as if there is STI risk or requesting for STI screening, symptoms suggestive of upper genital tract infection, as well as postpartum, post miscarriage, TOP, termination of pregnancy, or recent instrumentation of the uterus, and also recurrent symptoms despite treatment to normal um, symptoms of unknown cause, cervicitis found on examination, pH testing, microscopy, gram stain, culture, NAAT, urine REO, urine CS. With the treatment, it's basically education and reassurance, lifestyle modification and personal hygiene, and also um, pharmacological, we give antibiotics and antifungals. For pathological discharge, there are several conditions as you could see. Could be from bacterial vaginosis, or vaginal candidiasis, and trichomoniasis, chlamydia, and gonorrhea. Let's look at um, bacterial vaginosis. Epidemiology is not a sexually transmitted infection. It's the commonest cause of um, vaginal discharge in women of childbearing age. It is more common in Afro-Caribbean with the white and an increased prevalence is associated with great smoking, obesity, multiple sexual partners, prior pregnancy, and a history of induced abortion. The pathophysiology, bacterial vaginosis, um, formerly was known as um, non-specific vaginitis. It is known to be synergistic polymicrobial infection, and there is an increased growth of um, anaerobic bacteria with um, spontaneous decrease in lactobacillus of the normal flora causing pH of um, the vagina to be more alkaline and around 4.5 to 7.0. There is also a, um, an increase in the release of volatile amines which produces the offensive odor. Okay. So the bacteria usually implicated include um, Cadenerella vaginalis, Bacteroides, um, Mycoplasma hominis, Mobilincus species, Peptostreptococcus, Urea um, plasma, Urea, and also Prevotella species, Fusobacteria, and Urea plasma urolyticum. So these um, bacteria are implicated in bacterial vaginosis. The history, the symptoms, the patient may be asymptomatic, and mostly about fifty percent to seventy-five percent of the cases um, are asymptomatic. Asymptomatic patients pre normally present with the characteristic fishy vaginal odor, and um, this is the most common and most initial symptom, more prominent um, fluid sexual intercourse, and mildly to moderately increased um, vaginal discharge. The vulval irritation is less common. Dysuria and this pyrenea are rare. The risk factors, they should be inquired in the history. So, you have protein. It's regular vaginal dosing. Uh, this basically changes the delicate chemical balance and can make a woman more susceptible to infections. Can um, introduce new bacteria to the vagina and this can spread through the cervix, the uterus, and the fallopian tubes. Recent um, antibiotic use to Sexual activity, for example, multiple sexual patterns or recent increase in the number of sexual patterns related to that. And tell it facilities in schools and hygienic conditions too. On the physical examination, the vaginal examination, personal speculum is the main focus of the examination. So on examination, 
is it normal the appearing of the um, labia the enteritis the cervix and the cervical um, discharge to you know them the great thin homogeneous vaginal discharge with had which um, normally adheres to the vaginal mucosa or little or no evidence of inflammation um, could tell you what the cause is okay so that's basically um, patients with with um, bacterial vaginos vaginosis that's why you normally see the great thin and homogeneous discharge and discharge is usually of a fishy odor and smelling gram stain is the gold standard the sample of the discharge is taken in microscopic examination of the discharge is done so saline weight mount glue cells vaginal epithelial cells coated with bacteria giving a um, characteristic staple appearance are present the ph wife's, wife's test is a release of volatile amines which produce the characteristic fishy smell on addition of 10 percent potassium hydroxide the culture of the vaginal discharge is of no benefits if um, it is polymicrobial infection okay so basically diagnosing bacterial vaginosis is simple um, use a criteria the amsel criteria the um, hay isen criteria and also the nugent criteria the amsel criteria it um, basically includes the creamy grayish um, the first is creamy grayish white discharge seen with the eye and then this with the naked eye no with with the microscope also the second is if the ph is more than um, 4.5 and if there is a presence of q cells on microscopy and the release of characteristic fishy or the on addition of alkaline deposent potassium hydroxide and also positive in mind with or wife's test okay so at least three of these um, four criteria should be present in diagnosing bacterial vaginosis by the AMSOL criteria. Okay, and also the complications that could result um, for long lasting or untreated bacterial vaginosis may lead to more serious quail like endometritis, salpingitis, pelvic inflammatory disease. It also leads to an increased risk of acquiring. Um, HIV and other sexually transmitted infections too. Okay, for the complications in pregnancy, it includes premature rupture of membranes, preterm labor, chorioamnionitis, and also postpartum endometritis. So the mainstay of the treatment, and we just use metronidazole, the oral gel, as this sulfuram-like reaction with alcohol, and also. Um, clindamycin oral or the cream routine um, treatment of the pattern is not recommended it doesn't um, really affect the recurrence or relief for the woman with bacterial vaginosis so the treatment is treat the pregnant woman with um, symptoms but negative gram stain findings or treatment filler could um, be present and May treat individuals with positive direct microscopy without the symptoms. I do not advise advise the patients to avoid douching, um, avoid the use of strong detergents in um, washing underwear, abstain or limit the number of sexual partners, and also use um, contraceptives and uh, condoms too. And you have to finish the entire course of treatment to prevent recurrence. Okay, so that's it for um, bacterial vaginosis.